Hi everyone, this is Kyle with KDebate. I got a new setup. Um, I actually made about five videos before this. Uh, I made a video on my new setup, didn't post it. Made a video about politics, didn't post it. Made a, another one about politics, didn't post it. It's just been a mess. Um, and it, it's because I haven't been making the right videos and I felt that I wasn't doing as well as I should be in them. Uh, they were... It's not that they were gimmicky, and it wasn't that the content wasn't good. It's just the content wasn't what I wanted it to be. It wasn't... This is this is something new. I got everything new. I wanted to start something better. I didn't want to just keep doing the same thing. So this video is going to be uh, something very, very important to me. More important... Not Not necessarily more important than being kind to other people or being understood or, or um, just all those things that I've done, those were big as well. But this is, I, I need to make a video explaining myself. And I wanted to make this video, for, I, I've made similar videos in the past, but they weren't as, intri not intricate, they, they weren't as all-encompassing as this video is going to be. And I had a lot of problems, I tried making a video on white lies um, a couple days ago and it turned into this giant history thing for my life and it was a complete tangent and it wasn't on and then I ended up not posting the video because of it I need to get that out of my system I need to explain to you guys who I am and why I'm doing this more so than I have in the past so this video is going to be a as complete explanation of what I'm trying, why I am doing what I'm doing, why I am motivated. Because I've said in the past small tidbits of, you know, I'm trying to make up for my past and I'm trying to make the world a better place because my personal experiences have been bad and I don't want other people to suffer because of these bad things. And it's the empathy that I have for people. Um, so this this video, is it's going to be, hopefully it can be... It, that finally getting it out because I haven't ever. I mean, I've talked to my friends about it. They understand my situation, but I've never put it in a video. I've never, well, I've tried to in the past and every single time I get messed up and I end up deleting the video and I need to stop doing that. I need to get it out there so people understand because that is the biggest thing is understanding. And if you guys understand, maybe you'll be able to take what I say with more, with, with just knowing where it's coming from more, knowing why I'm doing this more. And that to me is very important. It's very important to know why somebody's doing something, what motivates them, because then you can act accordingly. You can say, okay, he has the problem with this, or he knows about this. So, you know, I can, I can relate or understand where, what it is more. So this is going to be a longer video. And I apologize if I get emotional during it. It is very, very hard for me to talk about a lot of these things. Uh, I'm going to talk about my when I was young. When I was really young, I was a terrible child. Um, I was I was a messed up kid. I was very angry all the time. I was very um, self entitled. I felt self entitled. I was just oh I'm smarter than everybody. Therefore I you know nobody else matters. Everyone else is an idiot. I I honestly believed that when I was young. And I'm talking about when I was seven. Like, 7 to about 16, I just felt like I was the smartest person ever, and no one else mattered because they were all idiots. You know, kids at school, they were always talking about petty things, they were always fighting, they were always picking on me because obviously I was a jerk, and I just I just used that as, as justification for, for my apathy, my my desire to get what I wanted, and I didn't. it didn't matter. It didn't help that my mom was um, very much the same way. She taught me that lying was a good thing. Uh, as long as you got what you wanted, it doesn't matter at anyone else's cost. Uh, she, she told me that um, as long as you weren't caught, then it wasn't wrong to do. Uh, you, got, you earned it because you got away with it. Um, she taught me a lot of things like that. She, she, um, when I was hurt, when I was about five years old, I was very hurt. Uh, TV fell on me and almost broke my leg and it put a gash in my leg that you could actually see the bone from and I was only five years old so it very scared me I didn't know what was going on it hurt a lot we went to the emergency room 
And when we were in the emergency room, we were there for like two something hours just waiting. So I was just kind of like crying and, you know, I was little. And she started robbing the, the, the room we were in. She started, she, she took things out of all of the different bins. She had syringes, she had vials of things, and she was just taking everything that she could. And no one was there. She was looking out the wind, like looking out the little screen thing and then putting a whole bunch of things in her purse. And when I asked her about it, she's like, oh, just don't, don't, don't think about this. Because I always questioned why everything was happening because I wanted to know. I still do want to know stuff. That's one of the things that hasn't changed. But she showed me that stealing was a good thing. She showed me that taking from others was a good thing. And my dad was always trying to teach us not to do those things. So I had a lot of conflict in my head. I didn't like my dad when I was growing up because I always thought that he hit my mom. I always thought that he was abusive because she said he was abusive. Um, Later on, I found out she was actually abusing him and... That was probably when I was about 10, and because that was, that was years later that I realized that. Because um, I, I grew up hating my dad, and so my mom was always trying to teach me all these things, and my dad was always trying to teach us not to, and when I was about <clears throat> somewhere between 11 and 12, there was a divorce starting, and, and it wasn't until I was about 13 that I actually moved in with my dad, and maybe somewhere between 13 and 14 is when I actually moved in with my, because I asked to move in with my dad. I said, I told my dad, I want to move in with you. I don't want to live with, with my mom. She's, she's not good for us. She's not good for me. And there was a lot of reasons behind that. There was a lot of, um, a lot of stuff that happened over, like when my oldest brother turned 18, she, my mom told him, because my dad had gotten kicked out pretty much. Um, at that time, because my, my oldest brother is six years older than me. So when I was about 12, he was 18. So the divorce was already happening. Um, so he got kicked out when he was 18. She said, either you start paying rent or you get out. So he had IOUs. She never paid us in uh, money, she, our, our allowance. She gave us little IOUs that she would sign. And he had about $500 worth of them. We all did. We all had a whole bunch of IOUs. So he paid her with the IOUs. She had signed them. He's like, okay, here's my rent. And then he was gone. He moved out just a couple weeks later uh, because it was for a month. And we didn't see him again for a long time. And the day after he did that, all of our IOUs disappeared from our rooms. So she went into the rooms and stole them uh, because she didn't want us to do that to her, uh, to, to, to get her, I guess, is what she thought. Um, but so her, her mentality was money. It's always been money. Uh, it's always been herself. She used her kids to get money a lot. Um, during the divorce, uh, she lied about, um, a lot of the stuff that the kids did. She lied about a lot of the things like there there are court records of the things she said that are not true. And one of the things was that our dad was never there. Uh, and that he just, he, he was never, ever there. He lived with us. He did. He got kicked out a lot and would come back a couple months later when he apologized for whatever he did. Um, but I was aware of a lot of that. I mean, I was young. I was. I was, I was, I, I hated him for a lot of my, my childhood because I, I honestly, I remember a fight. I couldn't see the fight and I heard somebody get hit. And it was actually, I thought it was my dad hitting my mom. It was actually my mom hitting my dad, and I didn't know that for a long time because I was little and I didn't ask. I was afraid to ask. Uh, it wasn't until years later that my mom actually said that she was the one that hit him because she was mad at him, and he disappeared for like six months after that. She had kicked him out and said, you'll never see your kids again, blah, blah, blah. So he ended up moving. He, he, was, he, was, he was there. He just wasn't allowed back, and when he was allowed back, he was always there. I remember growing up with him watching cartoons with us. And that was always really nice because we never knew when he was going to be gone. Uh, so we always tried to, we always tried to do things with him when he was there. And he really, really cared about us. It was probably the main thing that kept him going. Um, he never, he never tried to take advantage of any of us ever. Our mom did. She, um, my younger brother Michael, um, he's he's autistic. Not not extremely so, but he he does have motor function problems. And he doesn't think the way a lot of the same, uh, there's a lot of same ways we do. Um, he was always, he was in, incapable of understanding um, social cues, and he wasn't able to understand uh, just social situations. He, he just couldn't do it. 
Um, so he got um, diagnosed with um, the inability to, like, within the state. He, the, the state deemed him unfit to take care of himself. Our mom had a hand in that. So she started getting $700 um, a month uh, in a check to take care of him. She used it for gambling and drugs. Uh, I was there for that uh, because this was, this was to, all the way to today. She's still doing it. Uh, apparently now she's giving him the money because, you know, the rest of her family caught on and started demanding that she do that. So she's giving him the money now, but she didn't for a decade, probably two almost. Uh, my younger brother's three years younger than me, so I'm 27, he's 24. So he tens of thousands of dollars went into her pocket for gambling. It was meant to go to him to make sure he was okay. She didn't take care of him. She didn't. He He was autonomous. He was self-regulating like he could do things he just couldn't socialize and she didn't push him to socialize ever like she wasn't trying to get him to go do things he doesn't he, he has no active response to any of that stuff so he just never did it he is completely non-socialized so he's when you when you think of an autistic person who doesn't have a grasp on reality like a lot of people say oh they're, they're either self-aggrandizing or they're just completely awkward and everything. He's a very awkward person. He's not self-aggrandizing, even though he is very smart, because he, he most of his most of his issues are in social and and motor control. He's a, he's a very kind person. He always has been, because he's incapable of understanding why people would do bad things, which is another reason why our mom was able to manipulate him so much. Um, so he he's not socialized. That's one of the most important things. Is to, is to help them understand and learn, and she didn't do that. She pretty much just left him do his own thing. So that's another thing, reason why I dislike her. Uh, I do dislike her a lot. And a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't hate your mother. So you don't know my mom. You don't know the horrible things she's done. Um, she, uh, and this is, this is I, I know this is a lot about my mom, but this is the start. This is the start of a lot of my problems. This is like therapy. <laughs> But um, I've done this a hundred times, a thousand, hundred thousand times in my head, really, every day that I've had a bad day. Um, I've, I've thought about the darker times in my past, and it, not always that moment, but it's always been some time in my past. Cause, you know, it's not the future. I can't be sad about the future, but there's just a lot of things that I need to, I need to explain. I was taught that being bad was good, pretty much. And I was shown all of these examples of how being bad can benefit you. You can get money if you lie to the government. You can get money if you lie about situations you're in. My mom still, my dad owes my mom over $200,000 in child support. He's not allowed to leave the country. He's, he, all of his checks, 50% just taken out. Like he, I think he's gotten it reassessed recently. But there, he's never going to pay that off, which means he can never leave the country because he's a flight risk. His dream was someday to retire and then travel the world. That was his dream. It's gone now. He'll never be able to do it because my mom wanted money from him. I don't think my parents ever should have gotten married. I don't think they ever should have had any kids. My oldest brother is awesome. Justin, he's awesome. He, he, he's completely capable. He's self, like he got out of it before the divorce. And he, I don't think, I, I do believe it affected him. I, I believe it affected all of us, but he got stronger because of it. He got, like, he's had some bad relationships, but he never let all of this stuff mess up his relationships. Most of them were just incompatibility issues, or I don't know exactly what happened in, in his relationships, but I know that he was, he was healthy, he was happy, he was capable. He has a very good job, he has very good ha hobbies. He mountain climbs, or rock climbs anyway. Like he, he's into board games, he has a board game night with a whole bunch of his friends all the time. He's really good at socializing, he's a very good person, he's kind. Like, he's the best of all of us. He really is. Uh, I used to think Michael was the best of us because he was so so kind and so gentle and all those things. But he's not active. He doesn't do things. Like, he needs support from others to actually function, like, socially. And, and like, he could live a normal life, but it would be... I don't know if he would be happy without, like, somebody there with him making sure that he was um, socializing, which is, again, what my mom didn't do. So... Because he loves socializing. He just, he just doesn't know how to do it. I mean, he doesn't have a drive to do it. But when you get him in a situation, he's happy. So that, that was, that was, that was, that's just a, a thing. But 
Uh, Justin, he, he's the most capable. Eli, has an, he had anger issues. I don't know if he still does. I, I was messed up. I was angry all the time, and I was hateful, and I was, I was just bad. Uh, I was never a bigot, though. I was never, I was never judgmental of people as, as like, g- generalizations. It was everyone. It was just, like, I, I never, <laughs> never differentiated the races or the genders or anything like that. But it was just I hated everybody. But um, as, as time went on, as the divorce happened, and I realized that my dad was just not the abuser, um, I started to understand the situation better. And I started asking a lot of questions about this, and I learned a lot about it from both sides. They they lied, like, my mom lied about every single thing she ever did to today. That's why I don't talk to her anymore. But my dad, he had his own problems. He has his own, you know, stuff going on. He's old, um, and he has his own way of doing things, and I can respect that. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I can respect it. And... Um, there, there's, there's other things in, in that situation when I was living with my dad that also caused problems, but that was because I had problems and I have to deal with that. But, um, when, when things started coming out to, and my mom actually got custody of me, when the divorce happened, she got custody of all of the kids. I'm sorry. I just hit one of my wires. She had custody of all of us, even though I had asked to move in with my dad. Afterwards, she said she didn't want to have custody of me because I was so problematic. I would always question things that she did. I would always question why she was doing things because I knew something was wrong. And I knew she was lying about a lot, a lot of stuff. I just didn't know what it was or to the extent of it. So I would always question stuff. So any after the court thing, they went back into court and said, you know what? I don't want Kyle. Dad wants Kyle. Just give him custody instead. So... That happened, so I ended up moving in with my dad. Otherwise, I would have been moving in with my mom. And my older brother Eli said I was abandoning my family and all those things because I wanted to. I wanted to get away from that and move in with my dad. I wasn't taking care of my younger brother, stuff like that. I, I that bothered me a lot at the time, but uh, eventually, I don't know if it was true or if he was just angry or whatever. Because we were all angry, we were all messed up. Um, but after that, um, things quieted down. My dad had nothing. He had a job that paid him minimum wage with 50% cut out and taxed. He was making less than $3 an hour. Um, so we, did have food. we didn't have food a lot of the time. We didn't have, we didn't have electricity. Uh, we did have running water, but a lot of the times we didn't have... Um, like we, we used propane to, to, as our heat source, so, so it got cold sometimes, and we didn't have, a, we didn't have any AC or anything. Like we were in a mobile home. It was like 70, well, it was only, I think, 60 years old at the time. It's 70-something now. But it, it wasn't hooked up to the grid. The only thing it was hooked up to was running water. So our electricity came from a generator that we could not run very often. And our heating came from propane tanks, and we couldn't always afford those. So uh, also our food supplies were very, very limited. We ate a lot of canned foods. Uh, and I, the, mo- most of the time I ate was at school. And that was, my dad was always very adamant about me going to school. I was, I was, um, I was, what was, what's the word? I was put into school, like, the same week I moved in with him. So I was in the school, enrolled, that's it. I was enrolled in school the same week I moved in with him. And my mom just didn't care. She forgot how old I was. She forgot to enroll me in school once. Like, I was a year late going to school because she forgot to en- enroll me. She also didn't know how old I was. Um... Uh, she, she missed my 10th birthday by like a year almost. Uh, it was, it was only a couple months, but it was like, you're 10 now. It's like, no, I'm not. I was, I turned 10 like six months ago and she's like, oh no, you're not. So she, it was, it was I hated that, but it's, she just didn't care. She was, she was on drugs a lot. Uh, she, she drank a lot. She smoked. My dad drank a lot too, but he, he ended up getting sober after the divorce. Um, my mom, I don't know if she ever did stop. Um, doing those things, but when I was there, she didn't. She, she, I, I've never seen her not be um, messed up by st- by something. Um, I do know she smokes a lot. I'm actually surprised she's still alive. Uh, she smoked a lot, but my dad still smokes too. So it, it's just all of that stuff growing. I grew up around drugs. I grew up around a lot of drinking. Both my parents were alcoholics when I was young. And it, there was a lot of lying. There was a lot of um, there was a lot of just bad stuff, and I that's one of the reasons why I refused to drink. I refused to smoke. I refused to do drugs. 
is I've seen the effects of it and I don't like it. I, I really, really don't like it. And I can, that's another reason why I'm uncomfortable around people that drink excessively. Uh, I, I don't mind the idea of people drinking to relax or the idea of people to drinking to socialize. But when somebody is drunk, I become very uncomfortable because I grew up with that and it was, it was never good. It always turned into fights. It always turned into screaming and breaking things and yelling and it was just never good. So I, ha I have that as well. That's another problem I have. But again, I don't mind the idea of people doing it to socialize or to relax. It's a very different kind of thing to me. Um, it took me a long time to figure that out, but you know, to differentiate the two. But um, that's just another thing that I have. So uh, 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 the next thing was after the divorce, um, I moved in with my dad. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of anything. But I did. He made sure that I ate. He made sure that I was, you know, trying to do things. And I was still bitter and I was still angry and until I was about 17. Uh, at, at 16, uh, I remember uh, somewhere between 15 and 16, I went to visit my, my mom's side of the family again where my brothers were and all those things. So there was a big, pretty big gap. Because she moved to Arizona. She got remarried six months after the divorce and moved to Arizona. She just disappeared for a long time. We didn't get to see my brothers for... A really long time. So I ended up going to visit them. It might have been a 14 when I visited, but the big thing happened when they moved back. Uh, I did visit them for about <clears throat> a couple months in Arizona. There was nothing there. They never did anything. It was literally in the middle of nowhere. But when they, they, they went bust, they lost all their money because they tried something stupid and had to move back. They moved back with their, with my mom's sister in their pool house. All of them were living in a pool house that was not fit for two people. Maybe two people if you were really like friendly but there's only one room like literally it was a pool house it was one room and a bathroom and that was it so you know no privacy whatsoever and they had four people in it so and half of the main room was a bed it was it was not good but when they moved back and we were able to visit again uh i went camping with them uh i was about 16. I went camping with them, and I think I'd already already done some messed up stuff with my dad because I was like I was angry and I was just messing with everything. But I remember I remember getting my dad really mad at me, and then I went went camping with my mom, and they kicked me out when we were camping. Um, I said something uh, along the lines of "Stop frauding the government." We were in the middle of camping, like no one was around. Um, <clears throat> my brothers were there, and her husband was there, and we were all talking about something, and I said it offhand like a joke. You know, because she, she said she was a good person. Like, pretty, she always self-aggrandized, and I hated it. But, and I was always questioning her on, on these things. But we were camping, we were having a good time, uh, sort of. And I, I made an offhand comment about, well, yeah, you, you, you're not a good, you, you fraud the government. And she's like, what? And it became a really big thing. And then her husband kicked me out of the camper. They had a camper they were renting or something, I don't remember. But, yeah, because it was a long time ago. I, I don't think they were renting i think they just had it i don't remember where they got it so that's the thing is i don't remember where they got a lot of these things because i i wasn't there when they got them so i don't know the origins of them and i only saw it for a little while but uh we were in the camper i said this thing they started yelling at me they kicked me out and they said find your own way home and that's not ours so they they said go to dad's house uh we don't want to see you again we were in the middle of nowhere. I'm pretty sure it was called Fisherman's Retreat. I'm pretty sure that's where we were. And you could Google that. I know it's a place. I don't know if that is the place we were at, but because uh, we went to two different places. I remember a, a poker tournament that I played in and got seventh place. I think that was the same place. But cause I, I think we went twice. It, it was a long time ago. But some of the, some of the events are, are merging in my head where we went there twice and one of them was a poker tournament, and one of them was when I got kicked out. Or it was, they were both the same one, and it was just a lot longer than I thought. But when they kicked me out, they said, find your own way home, you're not welcome here anymore. And my brothers were there. And not my oldest brother, just my two younger brothers. And so they kicked me out, and I had nothing. <laughs> I had like $2 in my pocket, and a jacket, and that was it. And it was in the middle of the night, it was about midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. So I wandered around a while, and I was not in a good mindset because I was messed up emotionally because uh, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know if I was going to survive because it was cold. And I was banging on the door, let me back in. They wouldn't let me back in. And so I found a payphone. 
uh, it was next to the their little, little store uh, at the because it's a fisherman's retreat. It's not the, it's not nothing, but everything was closed. I couldn't get in the store. I couldn't. Everything was off. Everyone, everything was quiet. And there were other campers and stuff, so I wasn't gonna die. But in my mind, I wasn't sure. So I, I called. I don't remember which one I called first. If it was nine one one or my dad, but I did call both of them. I had enough money to make one phone call on the phone. Uh, so the nine one one is free. I already knew that. So I called one of them and I and I told them my situation. And I called the other one and I told them my situation. My dad was at work, I believe, and because he works nights. And he, he worked nights. I, I don't know if he still does. But um, <clears throat> he said he was on his way. He just needed to figure out where I was. I gave, the address was written on the phone. So I was able to give him the address and where I was and all those things. So he, he started going there immediately. It took him four hours to get there. Uh, it took the police the same amount of time. They pulled up at the exact same time. And then my mom came out when the police knocked on her door. And uh, they talked to my dad for a while. And then we left. Um, they made a police report. There is a police report somewhere. I don't know if it's still valid because I was only 16 and now I'm 27, so it was 11 years ago. Uh, but there was a police report filed. It was not for criminal negligence or child endangerment or anything like that. It was just an incident report. And then I went went home with my dad and my mom never spoke of it again. And she asked me once a few years later why I never called her, why I never talked to her anymore. And when I brought up the, the fisherman's retreat thing, she's like, that never happened. I didn't do that you're making that up and that messed me up a lot when that happened because I knew she was a liar and I knew she was a terrible person because of all the things that she has done but I didn't know she would blame me for something that she did which she she was doing she's like no you left you we don't know why you left you left on your own and then you didn't come back and we didn't know why we begged you to come back we begged you to come back and you just wouldn't like that that didn't happen that was no (laughs) Why would I do that? Um, so she was trying to mess with my head. Because in her own mind, she could do no wrong. She was self-aggrandizing. She was just... She was... I was 16. I was not young at the time. I do not remember the exact series of events because it was so long ago. And at the time, building up to that point, I don't remember exactly what trivial things we did. But the big event, the details of the big event are still very much in my mind because they were very, very important. She said I made it all up, and I said, no, you're making that up, and there are other people here that know what happened because they were there. And Michael and Tommy were younger. Tommy's eight years younger than me, so he he was only, you know, you know he would have been eight. He would have been too young, really. Michael won't say anything about it because he's afraid to cause problems. He's only three years younger than me. He would have been 13, totally able to remember these things. And it was just, her husband's dead now, like the person she married. He died, um, so he couldn't say anything. But there were, there were other, at the time that I had that conversation, there were people around that could have said things like that. And she's just like, nope, nope, didn't happen. So it just never went anywhere because I, was, I flat out told her, just admit that you did these things. To me specifically, so that I'm I stop having these mental problems that you've been giving me, which was stress, anxiety, um, just why is she doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Why do you do this to everybody that cares about you? And she just said no. So I, I I hung up on her, and she called me back crying, begging for for me to to talk to her, and I just I just said no, and I hung up on her again. And it made me feel really bad because she would not admit that something happened. She said, I left. She didn't know why I left, and they begged me to come back. That didn't happen. I tried to get back in. They wouldn't let me. Now, I do not blame her 100%. Her husband was the one that was the one that kicked me out because he was so mad at me because he didn't believe that she frauded the government, which she did. Uh, she didn't. Uh, he didn't believe that she did any of these things. That's why he married her. He loved her, forgave her for everything, even though she was kind of like they were both messed up because they were both like she she was not he was old like he was a lot older than her and so and he was sick he was ex-military he was very sick he was very angry at things so um she she just didn't stop it so i i don't blame her 100 percent for that but she just wouldn't admit that it happened i can't move past something that somebody 
just deflects and blames you for. It's like, um, oh, you ate the, the last sandwich or whatever. And it's like, no, you did. It's like, no, you did. And it's, it's times that by a trillion, saying, I didn't kick you out and make you feel like you might die. Uh, make you feel unloved in every respect, disown you. They actually said, you know, find your own way home and not ours. Um, they said that when I was getting kicked out and they wouldn't let me back in. And they, they said that, no, I left. So that messed me up a lot because it's like, did that really happen? No, it didn't. I had to really, really think about it because they kept telling me I was wrong. And I'm like, well, why would they lie to me? And then I remembered that she lied about everything to make sure that nothing she did was ever wrong. It took me a long time to understand that. And it hurts a lot to think about because, you know, just admitting that, people are going to say, oh, well, maybe you are wrong. It's like, I've, I lived it. And I know that the mind can play tricks on you. I know that it does with her a lot. She's completely delusional about a lot of things. But um, I was I was younger and I wasn't sure about things, and it hurt a lot, especially in the midst of a lot of emotion, emotional turmoil. Um, but her her response to me, because I've always criticized her defrauding of the government, which she did several times. She's still doing it, actually. Um, she, she's been on food stamps for over 24 years, and she lies about her income. She lies about how, how much she has. Uh, she lies about who lives with her. Um, she's just... Every year, always, she taught me how to do it. She's like, this is how you do it. This is how you get money. That's why I hate using public programs, because I grew up with people abusing it. And I'm not saying that everyone abuses it. She's one of the, one of the, the, the smaller groups that does it. Her whole family does it, because they're all greedy. Everyone on my mom's side of the family that I've ever met is the same way, because that's how they were raised. Uh, and everyone on my dad's side of the family, uh, they, they volunteer... At churches, they volunteer for soup kitchens, they donate their money to charities. I'm like, okay, these are the two most different kinds of people ever. And my mom was always criticizing my dad for not, you know, just just get as much money as you possibly can, you know, I, what are you doing? So very, very, very different kinds of people. So I'm trying to make up for a lot of things. Uh, a lot of the problems that I've caused just for being me, I was a very terrible child, as I said. And... Growing up, I learned a lot of things, and I started to understand that, you know, my place in the world isn't as big uh, as, I, as I thought, because I used to self-grandize as well. And it wasn't until I was 17, a year after I got kicked out of my, uh, my mom's cabin place, pretty much, uh, I started to really understand that my dad cared, because um, when, when I was young, when I was really young, um, I wanted my parents to hate me. I wanted everyone to hate me. And I did make them hate me. I, I, my, I, my mom hated me because I always questioned her authority and, and, you know, wouldn't let her get away with things. And I made my dad hate me just by being a terrible kid. It's like I wouldn't clean. I wouldn't do the dishes. I wouldn't, you know, I, I ended up doing it eventually. Uh, I, I still did them. I just put it off for days and days. But, you know, I didn't help. When he got hurt, I wasn't really helping him very much. And, you know, I, I was just very apathetic towards everything. But when, when he came to pick me up without any question, it's like, I'm getting you out of that bad situation. And when I asked him why, he's like, because I love you. And it, it really messed with my worldview at that point because it's not about me. And for my dad, it wasn't about him. It was about his kids. And... You know, as I said, I disagree with a lot of the reasons he does things. I disagree with a lot of his belief systems, but I still respect them. Because he showed me that caring about others is so much better than only caring about yourself. Because that's what my mom did. All she cared about was herself. And what my dad did was he cared about other people, and it got them out of bad situations. And it wasn't always the fix. It wasn't always the only course of action. Sometimes you do have to care about yourself. But... I went so far one way and then crashed and burned and then I went the other way towards what my dad taught me. And it helped so much. It, it kept me from going insane pretty much, which was I didn't understand why I was so unhappy all the time. I didn't understand why I didn't feel like I had a purpose, like I was just hurting everything around me and then I was just going to die. Like I didn't care. 
And when he when he showed me that caring about others is really, you know, valuable, then I started trying to do that. And it was hard at first because I wanted to be the same way as I always was. I, I tried reaching out to people and they would bite my hand pretty much. Uh, it happened with my older brother a few times because he did have anger issues. He didn't trust me because I was, as I said, a terrible child. I was a terrible person. So when I tried actually reaching out and helping other people around my family, it backfired and made me regress a little bit. And then I tried again and I regressed a little bit. And then I started helping my friends and I started helping other people. And it, it made me feel like I had a purpose. It made me feel like I wasn't so, so evil. I wasn't so bad. I wasn't so petty because uh, I was all of those things. And it helped me get out of that a lot. So I do respect my dad for that a lot, for helping me understand that there are things outside of my own mind that I need to, to value, um, outside of myself that I need to value. So I, I grew up with a lot of problems. I still have a lot of problems. I'll never get over them. I'm actually, after this, I'm going to make a video that I'm not going to post. Uh, I'm going to put it privately and it's going to be a video to my mom because I need to, this is this is the two videos that I wanted to make. I wanted to make this video explaining to you guys who I am and why I have these things and why I have these thoughts and why, why I am so desperately trying to help people but also conflicted on how to do it is in my mind I am always torn between self um, self promotion, self self um, gain, and selflessness is every. I want to be selfless. I want to be kind. I want to be generous. I want to give my entire life to others. And I'm not effective at it. I'm not good at it. And I feel that the only way to be good at it is to self aggrandize or self promote. But every time I think of self promoting, I think of all of the horrible things that came with it. All of the all of the sadness and depression and borderline insanity that I, I was facing every day growing up. So I have this major problem is I want to help people, but I don't have the, the broadness of, of skill sets to be able to do it well without self-promotion. And I can't self-promote. I can't do those things. It hurts me very much. And I've said that before. I just never explained why. I was taught that you, are, that you yourself focus on number one don't care about anything else. I was taught that and I believed it for a while. And it made me so sad all the time. I was I cried myself to sleep all the time. I was depressed all the time. I was angry. I I, I wanted people to just just cater to me and it was just it was bad. It never made me feel like I had any value at all. Like moments of fleeting superiority, maybe. Yes, definitely, probably. I don't know. It was, this, it was the thoughts of an insane child, a self-righteous idiot. But I can't, I can't do those things anymore. It, it makes me have flashbacks to all of the things that I used to believe. Like, if I just do this, I'll get more views. No, I can't do that. And so I'm trying to get you guys to understand why I'm not doing those things. Why I, I don't just bring up clickbait or, or mess with my titles or edit my videos to make myself look better. And I hate that. I hate all of those thoughts because they come up constantly. It's like, if I just did this, I'd, I'd reach more people and I'd help more people. But where do I draw the line? Where do I stop doing it to be more popular and, and help more people without also doing it to help myself? And it's a line that I have a really hard problem with because I know logically I can help more people if I just do that. But at the same time, it's it doesn't it, it's it's wrong to me. It's wrong and I can't stop thinking that. So I have a lot of problems with that. And there's there's a lot of other stories I could be talking about, but most of those are just sob stories at this point. They're just, oh woe is me, you know, I had this bad childhood. But it's just I, I was raised poorly. By by um, by my mom and I, I I need to I need to just say one this one last thing I'm gonna end it. A lot of people say you have to forgive to to live. You have to forgive to be happy to get over it. Um, I disagree. <laughs> I 
I have always found that uh, forgiveness, while it is an internal thing, it's not something you actually give to somebody. You can say you're sorry, and then it makes them feel better. But uh, I, I, I don't necessarily believe that forgiveness is the only way to become a better, you know, self, a better person in yourself. Uh, I don't feel trapped in this. I feel like it has become a part of me, and I do agree that it is a part of me. My, my childhood, my, my upbringing, all the things that I remember, and all the, all the, the regrets that I have in relation to all of these things. I asked my mom uh, just a few years ago um, when I was married. My, 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 my now ex-wife uh, demanded that I do this, and I, I said, fine, I'll do this. I called my mom, and I had a conversation with her, and the conversation was, it was amiable, it was, it was okay, and then I asked her about, the, you know, pretty much the reason I called was about that event when we were camping, and I was like, if you, I'll, if you just admit that it happened, we can move on from this, like, I need that, it is something that I need to, to actually forgive you for it, because you blamed me for it, you said it was my fault, you, you, you claimed no responsibility for it. I cannot forgive you if you're not... It, it's not even that she has to be sorry. It's just it, she said it never happened. And she said it was m me doing it. So I said, just admit that it happened. That's all you have to do. And she said, it never happened. It was you. I'm not going to ever admit it. And she was crying at this point because she was, she was upset about it. I was like, okay. And I hung up on her. And I never talked to her since. And she has my phone number. Well, she had it. I changed my phone number since then, but it was not because of my fault. It was uh, my ex-wife took the phone, but it was just that I tried to do it, and all all I need is for her to say that she she did it because I know that it's not that important to me. To her, it's very important because she she lost her son pretty much. She disowned me. She flat out disowned me. So and she's saying she never did, and that she doesn't know why I don't call her anymore. Um, but there, there's this big issue with that for me. It's honesty, and in, and she's never been honest with me at all. I can never believe that she says anything. Like, had she admitted it, I could say, okay, this is a step towards her becoming a better person, or her, you know, maybe she changed, maybe she's not that bad person that I remember growing up. She's, she's always been that bad person, and it hurts me a lot to, to say that because I want her to be a better person. I want her to be the kind of person that I can look up to and, you know, call her mom and call her, um, you know, to call her sometimes on the phone um, just to talk. I can't do that because that will always be there because it's not just a single moment in time for me anymore. Every, every anxiety attack, every panic attack, I had wondering if it was my fault, wondering if I did misremember it somehow, that I was somehow going insane and making memories up. My mind is where I live. It is what I am. I can't understand that it would be so, so malevolent towards me. And she told me that it was, that I was making things up to make things worse in my world around me. And... I've, she was lying. She's still lying. She won't admit it. So my next video is going to be me talking to her. And I'm going to send that video to her in some way. I'm going to grab the link. It's going to be private. None of you are going to see it uh, unless somebody leaks it. I don't know who would do that. But um, it's not that big of an important thing anyway. But I'm going to send it to her, and it's going to be me asking her one more time. And it's going to have other things in it too, but... Um, it's not going to be a happy video. It's not going to be a good video. And uh, I, I need to do that one more time. I'm 27 years old. Uh, I know these things affect me. And I know she's, she's, not going to have, she's not going to live much longer. So this is really the only chance I'm going to have to do this. I gave her chances in the past. And I, want, I don't want to be the one that put the wall up. I, I wanted to give her a door to walk through. So... Um, this is this is me trying. I'm. I'm uh, it's not as important as a lot of people think it is. In that you have to do this to move on. But I. I don't want her to to have this regret that she doesn't have an opportunity to fix if if she's changed. So, again, every action I take is trying to be a good person, and I don't know the right way to do that. I'm just trying. It's what I do.
So uh, that's it. Uh, this is a very long video. I'm going to post it right now. I'm not even going to watch it. I'm going to make sure the audio quality is good so that it's not messed up. And I'm going to post it. I'm going to post this video. I'm going to record my other video right after this. So no other videos today. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this taught, uh, explained stuff about me a little bit about why I have so many problems. But um, I, hope you have a I hope you have a nice day and peace.